Today I'm talking with Dr. Jim Tucker, author of Life Before Life, uh, about the subject some people call loosely reincarnation, also an assistant professor of psychiatry at the University of Virginia. Good to have you here today. Yeah. Thanks. In your book, Life Before Life, you detail a number of cases of people who have claimed to uh, have lived a previous life, and it's mainly uh, your book focuses on children and their memories. Children between the ages of two and three sometimes give some very detailed accounts of a past existence. Can you give us an example of what sure. cases? Yeah, these are cases that's not hypnosis or anything like that, but just spontaneously these kids start talking at a very early age. A lot of our cases were ones that Ian Stevenson um, investigated years ago, um, particularly in Asia. So one is a little girl named Kum Kum Burma in India who said that she had lived in a city that was 25 miles away and not just that she lived in the city but named the district where she lived. Um, her aunt wrote down a lot of what she was saying which included a lot of details like son's name, grandson's name, how the, uh, what the son did for work, town where the father lived, a lot of other personal details and then eventually um, a friend of the father's went to that district and found that in fact all the statements the girl had said were accurate. Um, and, and that's sort of typically what happens if the child gives enough details including names of places then people have often gone there and found that there was in fact a match for, for the statements that they were making. And you have the birthmark cases and the cases where uh, kids are injured. Several of your cases dealt with uh, ch children being born without fingers or toes but they had yeah. recounted it in a previous life. That's how they died. Can you give us Well, that's cases? right. I mean, there are a lot of cases. Ian read a book of over 200 such cases of kids with birthmarks and birth defects that match wounds, usually the fatal wounds, that the previous person experienced. So, for instance, there was a little girl who recalled the life of someone who got his fingers chopped off as he was being murdered and then was born with, with very deformed fingers. Um, there's another little boy who talked about being born in another village who had lost the fingers of his right hand in a fodder chopping machine and then he was born, his left hand was fine but his right hand didn't have full fingers. Um, There's also a little girl, a case where uh, the previous person had, had skull surgery uh, just before dying and this girl was born with this um, band going around her head. Very unusual on the born, back of her head. Yeah. Very unusual, yeah. Well, as you look at this, and you've studied a lot of the cases, and it goes back into the 1960s with Dr. Ian Stevenson, who was your mentor. Yes. Uh, you've detailed many, many cases. What does this say about the nature of our universe? Uh, we're not basically physical beings. Our brain is not the basic component, or is it what you call consciousness? Yeah, well, it's certainly, I mean, the cases provide evidence that memories and emotions and sometimes even physical traumas can survive the death of the brain and, and carry over into another life. So that means questioning the whole materialist outlook that mainstream science has that the physical world is all that there is and the consciousness just sort of evolved accidentally as our, our brains evolved. Um, what these cases along with work in a lot of other areas uh, suggest is that there is more than just the physical universe. That there is this factor of consciousness that seems to be able to function separately, at least at times, function separately from a functioning brain. In an interview I did with you on, at Rutherford.org and our Old Speak magazine, we talked a bit about people that uh, die, mainly a lot of them by natural causes that come back. But they depict a place on the side where uh, it's basically a real world to them. And, and as you would believe, just as real as this world, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but uh, then you have the Christian belief of heaven and hell. Is there any evidence that when people go over they go to a heaven? Is there a place called hell? I mean, this is the kind of questions yeah. you always get with these kind of things. Yeah, and, and with our cases, about 20% of the children will describe events between lives. Now the others don't, but the 20% do. And their descriptions vary. And some of them describe positive experiences and some describe negative ones. When um, they describe negative, negative, what kind of negative experiences do they describe? 
Well, you hear about people floating in her light and all that. Those are the happy experiences. Yeah. So there are negative experiences. There can be, and there. Um, I mean, they don't necessarily describe fire and brimstone, but ones of being uncomfortable or miserable or hungry, and sometimes with negative beings that are chasing after them and that sort of thing. Um, well, these are people though that do get reincarnated and come back. Well, that, well, that's right. These are the children who are reporting okay. this from before they were born. So they're getting a second chance or something like that. Yeah, and, and With the American cases on the positive side, uh, a lot of them will use the word heaven, say that they were in heaven after they died and, and then before they came back for the next one. What you're studying kind of challenges the whole idea of the materiality of what we believe, and, 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 and you mentioned that. Um, what does it say then how we should be conducting ourselves here in this life? Is, it, is there a lesson in all this, or is this just... Dr. James Tucker doing research, but is there a lesson that we need to take away from all this? Well, I mean, m m put it in context. Yeah. If you're going to a place where there's an inner light and it's really nice and be a nice place to mm -hmm. be, and all of a sudden you're back here where we have maniacs running around some countries persecuting mm -hmm. people, what's the lesson? Is there a lesson? Well, I think there may be a couple. One is that um, some people would use the word karma, but it does seem that experiences in the past life can have an effect at least on where the child comes back. Okay. Um, so sort of from a self-centered standpoint, the better life you lead, perhaps the better um, afterlife or the better return life. Um, I think beyond that, that these cases, and, and again, work in other areas, um, suggest that there is this consciousness peace or spiritual peace that we all have, and that it may be united in, in uh, a way that we're, we often seem so separate, but there may this be this peace that we all share. So hopefully, I mean, I Together don't... Together as a world spirit, or what are we talking about? Yeah, I mean, just the that, that soul, we're all sort of all in this together. And, and whether we're separate, we have this separate consciousness piece that's completely separate or sort of all tied in together. I mean, who knows, but... You, we've talked a bit, and you basically uh, you have all kinds of ideas about how things came about. And we've talked about the mind with a capital M on yeah. it. You use the term shared dream. Why don't we end on? Why don't you tell people what, in your viewpoint, uh, what we see as reality, and then you get all of the people going in past life experiences yeah. that you're you're looking at. What is, what made all this? Well, I we do see think, today. not just from our cases, but I think if you look at, for instance, findings in quantum physics, you can see that um, in many ways the world is only created when it's observed. So it's only created when it is in consciousness. And the, the metaphor that I use is the shared dream, that, that the world is not the mechanistic clockworks of, of Isaac Newton. But it's much more complicated than that, that, that arising out of consciousness is this physical world. And there may well be other physical worlds that arise out of consciousness also. Okay. Agree or disagree with, with Dr. Jim Tucker, I highly recommend this book. Think about it. Read it. Thanks for coming today. Uh, my pleasure.